Hi, thanks for watching my video, and I want to give you a little introduction as to what we're going to be doing with this series of RSS feed uh, videos that I'm going to be coming up with. It's a pretty detailed system, and uh, so I, I feel it needs an introduction because a lot of ways to uh, capture news feeds, just I, I haven't seen anything that goes this far with it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a system that reads news feeds that you decide on which news feeds you want read and then not only does it read them it takes those feeds the information stories or whatever gathers them into a database and puts them into a database on your own site so when a feed expires for example I'll show you a local news feed that I use uh, this contains about 20 stories and you'll see when you go down to the very bottom that the oldest story is only a few days old actually two days old and uh, then the story falls off so you can lose information if you just run live feeds plus the other problem is you can't search your live feeds with this we're going to take this feed data and we're going to insert it into a database and then we're going to uh, take that information that's inserted into the database and we're going to make it searchable for example if I search plane on here uh, you'll see anything since I've started this a few months ago that it is a story about a plane even though it's gone from the original news stories feeds I have 761 results so I can go back over old news after this has been running a while and uh, I can you know I can scroll down and find a story from say a couple months ago here's one from May 9th it's planes trains and automobiles I don't know if they're still gonna have that story on the site if they don't well then then they don't but at least if they do I have a way to find it and get to it all within this system so okay let's I clicked it I don't know what's going on okay there we go click it again and you can see that that story still does exist on that news channel so I could read this story about the 10 busiest airports or whatever and if I wanted to do some research about planes and things happening having to do with Florida uh, I can do that because all of my news feeds come out of Florida so now let's go back over to the main site here and show you another advantage that I have. The other advantage of indexing these and putting them into a database is the fact that I can build a Twitter and I can tweet my news. And my news tweets every five to ten minutes. The freshest story shows up on Twitter. And here's my floor blog news tweets. And uh, there was one tweet that happened three minutes ago, which is since I started this. And by the time I end this, there will be another one. And this is happening automatically in the background. I have a cron pro program that goes into my uh, database and pulls the latest story and tweets it. And this happens every five to ten minutes because that's how I have it set up. Also, and you can see there's a new tweet right there. It just already happened as I was uh, as I was showing you this very page. Then uh, what happens if if you're one of the 2,485 followers I've got right this minute? Uh, you can go click on this story and it will take you to this story right here and then if you click here uh, it'll take you directly to the newspaper and the story that has uh, this on the newspaper now this story was probably just posted a few minutes ago because that's how fast the system works it pulls from 83 different news feeds using two different cron scripts that run every two minutes at a time each cron script runs about 21, 22 news feeds, and it just uh, every two minutes it runs through 20 of them, and uh, so in four minutes it gets through 40, say 42, 42, 43, 44 feeds, and I have two of these scripts running. So every four minutes, any news story that comes out from any of these 83 news sources within five minutes of it hitting there it is on my page and typically uh, depending upon how many show up uh, the top story gets tweeted now I'm gonna run over to my database here real quick and give you a just a brief glimpse of how that works uh, there's two fields in here that we're gonna be using and one is the feeds themselves and the other is the news that gets uh, put up by these feeds so we're going to go to the news and we're going to go to the latest stories which is going to be the last ID in the field here and that's 89616. Now if I look over here to the right I can see whether this story has been tweeted or not. 
and my Twitter always looks for the very last story, the latest story. And if this number over here in tweet is a zero, it will tweet the story and change this number to a one. If the number is a one, it'll skip it and go to the next zero. But very few get skipped. You can, you can see that, well, actually they do get skipped, but it always runs the latest story. And so if two stories have come out in the last five minutes, one of them will get skipped. And uh, as you can see down here by the zeros, it runs a little bit less than half of all of the stories. But sometimes uh, things move a little slowly and it just pops story after story after story. Now, if it's run the latest story already and a new story hasn't come in, it'll just move down to the very next zero in the list. So occasionally it'll tweet a story that's 10, 20 minutes old. But almost never is it going to tweet anything any older than that. But yeah, that's, that's the Twitter part of it. And I use a web-based cron that runs these cron jobs every, uh, depending upon what they are, tweets. I don't want to run them every two minutes, so I run them every five to ten minutes. And then the feed updaters, I run those every two minutes. So I've always got the freshest information in here. And then it always gets put to here, uh, and then it goes out on, on the Twitter. And you can see that uh, I've already got another new tweet that just went out. And that's that one. And uh, also between the Twitter, uh, from the Twitter, I can actually put this onto my Facebook. And if you'll see, this is my personal Facebook page, and I'm subscribed to my Flora Blog Facebook page. So all of this information from Flora Blog, and this Virginia News Live is also one of my websites that I have a, a Facebook page on. So these, all these stories, all these RSS feeds, get pumped out to social media, which gives me a considerable amount of traffic from this. Uh, all these people are really interested in knowing okay every five minutes I can get a news story on Twitter and I can look at look at the thing get free tickets today to see Bill Clinton at FIU that doesn't interest me so I'm not gonna click it uh, police man walking home in September is still missing and this is in Tampa okay I, if what if I live in Tampa and I wanna know you know I can click on this and get right to that story but I can see these stories and I can just decide which I want to go to and which I don't. So I get a considerable amount of traffic from my uh, Flora Blog followers on Twitter. I've also got a few more of these feeds and uh, recipe feed and the use of the Twitter and the use of, uh, of these news feeds and RSS feeds and how, how they get harvested. It's just incredible. And I just want to show you real quick. This is a feed parser and this, this doesn't actually put it into the database, but this reads the feed and outputs it on a page. Now, if you can output it on a page, you can also put it into a database. And we're going to get into that. And we're also going to get into this very, very simple script. This is going to be how we start with things. And this simple script will take, this is what the RSS feed of this news channel looks like. And basically, you get there by finding this little button on the website, clicking on that, and then you just drill down until you find it. Now I'm going to right click on this and hit view source and you'll see that it's all an XML document in the back end. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into how you can read this XML document and take these tags out of the back end of this XML document and use them for your own purposes. So we go back here this is what it looks like there and this is what that tiny little script will turn it to that is a page that's on your site. So it's going to be a fun project. It's going to be a long project. You don't need to use everything out of this project. And then again, you might use everything and even expand on it. But I uh, look forward to going through this with you and uh, hope you enjoy it. And if you like this, please thumbs up, comment, rate, subscribe, and we will see you in the first video.